So one of the things most of us have been taught is to save for retirement. I'll never forget, when I was a young man, my grandma said, Chris, when you get a job, ask them, do they have a 401k? I'm like, 401k, grandma, check. And then she said, but then if they do, ask them, do they match? I'm like, okay, match, got it. What is a match, grandma? Well, that means if you put money into the retirement account, they're gonna put money in for free. And I'm like, grandma, free money? There's, these guys are giving free money? Well, when I got into Wall Street and I became a financial advisor, that day came and I asked right there in the interview, uh, excuse me, sir, um, do you guys have a 401k retirement plan? Oh, you do, great, okay, check, grandma said. And uh, how about, do you guys match? Oh, you do, check, in. That is what most of us do. Why though? Why do we put money in 401ks? Is it so that someday we're gonna retire? But what is retirement? Have you ever defined that? Is retirement $60,000 a year passively without you working? Is it 100? Is it 500? Have you ever stepped out of the box and asked yourself, what is the definition for you of your retirement? Because I can tell you this, if the definition of your retirement is undefined, your retirement will be undefined. You will fall into the statistics by Social Security saying that only five out of 100 people will be financially secure at the age of retirement. And only one of them will be wealthy. In today's video, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna show you how to use that retirement plan, that 401k, 403b, 457, TSP. It goes by many names. I'm gonna show you how to use it to not just pay for your retirement, but I'm gonna show you how to use it to pay off your debts and to make the same returns you're giving away on all your debts. So pay attention. This is cool. And this will change your destination called retirement. Let's dive in. So here we go, 401k plans qualified employer-sponsored retirement plans. Now, you might not have a 401k because you might work for a school. It might be a 403b, which would be nonprofit. It might be a 457 plan or called something else if you work for the government. They're all the same. The rules are basically the same. Why do we put money in a 401k? Let's start there. Well, probably because somebody told you that you should put money in a 401k because you got to save for your retirement. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to retire and you don't want to work until 67, 70, 75 like some of the other folks that you're surrounding yourself with. You want to be able to retire when and how you want. So that's the first reason. The second reason is, well, they lure you in. I mean, come on, every dollar you put into that qualified retirement plan is tax deductible. You don't have to pay tax on that money. So if you make 100,000 and you put 10 grand into your 401k, you pay tax on how much? 100 minus 10, 90,000. So there's a tax advantage today for putting money in the 401k. And then that money goes into some basket of mutual funds, whatever investments you put it into. And that money is gonna grow or not, and it's gonna grow tax deferred. So you don't pay any tax on that money. And that might be five, 10, 15, 20 years into the future before you retire. So that's a lot of tax advantages. But what happens when you decide to retire? And what happens when you decide to start taking that money out as an income. They call it distributions or RMDs, required minimum distributions. You have to pay tax on whatever the amount you take out is. So when you take the money out, let me ask you just a simple question. Do you think taxes are going up or down in the future? I'll wait, what do you think? Put it in the, put it in the comments right now. Taxes, are they going up or are they going down in the future, five, 10, 15, 20 years? Yeah, they're going up, right? They almost have to. $34 trillion in debt with the government, it's gotta get paid somehow. So we're gonna take a tax deduction today, okay, at whatever tax bracket you're at, and for some of you, you're gonna be making less today than you ever will for the rest of your life. That's a fact. You're gonna work harder, you're gonna go out there, you're gonna bust your butt, you're gonna start your own company, you're going to make more money, and as you make more money, what do you do? You slide up the tax scale, you pay more taxes, Okay, so we understand that. So if you can agree that you're gonna make more money in the future and you can agree that taxes are going up, you're putting money in at a lower tax bracket for a deduction to take it out at a higher tax bracket. That's broken. 
Secondarily, during that entire period of time you put the money into the 401k, who was in control of that money? Is it you or is it the fund family or the provider of the 401k? Well, it's not you. Because here's what I'm gonna tell you. If you put money in a 401k and you want that money back, something happens. How do you take it back? Well, you could take a withdrawal. And if you take a withdrawal, just like a distribution at retirement, it is 100% taxable. But if you're not 59 and a half, you are going to pay a 10% IRS penalty for taking your money out before they said you could. Shame on you. How dare you take your money early, you bad boy or girl. Anyway, let's get back to reality. So you're not in control of your money. So you literally give up control of your money and you were baited in by a pre-tax deduction at the lowest tax rate, and that money's gonna sit there five, 10, 15, 20 years growing in the mutual funds or going down or going up or going down the roller coaster. We all know how the market works. And that magic day comes. I don't know what that number is. Is it 60, 62, 65, 67 for you? When you get to retire, and now you're gonna start taking money out of it, Gosh, let's just hope the markets are doing well. Let's just hope you got enough money. Let's just hope tax rates aren't through the roof. But here's the other thing, and this is kind of a, a good thing. A lot of 401k plans allow you to put money into the plan and the employer, yeah, your boss makes a match. He literally matches your money. Now, let me give you an example of that. Let's just say you decide to put 5% into your 401k. 5% of your gross income, great. So that's what you're gonna contribute. But your employer has a 4% dollar for dollar match. So that means for every dollar you put in up to the 5%, they're gonna match it up to 4%. Not too bad, that would be called the safe harbor plan. Not always, but usually if it's 4%, it's safe harbor, why? So that the employer, the owners of the company, the executives of the company can maximize the amount they put in tax deductible. I'm getting down a rabbit hole, but let's just bring it back. Let's hit the key facts of why your 401k is not being used properly by so many of you. Here's the reason. You're putting money into a vehicle, into a plan that can't be used until 59 and a half without early penalty fees. You're putting money into a plan that you give up control of that money, which means if an opportunity comes across your desk, like, whoa, Look at this, honey, we could do this real estate deal and make 30% and it's first lien position and it only takes 12 months. We should do this. Oh, honey, we can't. All our money's in the 401k and you can't take it out of there. You'll pay a penalty and taxes and all this. Missed opportunity. How many opportunities do you have to miss in your life to realize, wait a second, wait a second, I need to take back control of my money. Give me my money back. But here's the thing that they usually don't talk about. You probably know this, maybe you don't. Most 401k plans, most employer-sponsored retirement plans will allow you to take a loan. You can take a loan from your, your retirement plan. If you're still working for that employer, if you don't plan on leaving that employer anytime soon, which I'll cover that in a second, and if you understand the rules behind taking loans, this, might be a really good option for you. But that's what I want to explain is why? Well, I want you to take back control of your money. I've said this over and over. I want you also to not just take back control of your money, but I want you to BYOB, be your own bank. So if you're gonna be your own bank, let's just talk about what does that mean? We're not getting into the infinite banking concept yet using those specially designed whole lives, but I want to pave the way showing you a process of you taking back control of your money by you becoming your own bank without having to do anything different than what you're doing now with your 401k. So let's dive in. First off, how many of you would agree that saving money in a 401k and then having all your other money that you make that's not going into the 401k go out the door to debt payments is a failed plan? How many? Any of you? You? Jim, do you think that's a failed plan? Susie, what do you think of that? You, you do? You, get, get out of here, Susie. You know, there's always gonna be that one person, that 95 percent or person that just can't get this. Yeah, anyway, 
I'm talking to the five percenters, the rest of you that do understand that, yeah, that's a failed plan. It doesn't matter that you're saving money if everything you're making is going out the door because you're stressed, you're working day in and day out, living paycheck to paycheck, and the only one getting rich are your credit cards, your car finance companies, and all your debtors. So I say this all the time, the fastest way to wealth is through your own debts and expenses. Let me repeat that, the fastest way to wealth, the fastest way for you to get rich, if you want me to say that, is through your own debts and expenses. Why? Well, because it's like a boat. If you set out to sail in a boat that has holes and lots of holes, are you going to make it to the port of call where you, your destination is? No, you got holes in your boat, man. You're gonna sink. Or you're, you're just gonna continue through your whole life bailing water out of the boat just so you make it to the port of call and you're so exhausted by the time you get there that when you get there, you're probably gonna die early. We don't need to bail out the boat. We don't wanna sail in boats or ride on boats with holes. Did you not watch the Titanic? You see what happened there? It hit an iceberg, it got a big hole. Oh yeah, yeah you know the rest of the story. Let's not have that be what your financial future looks like. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to show you how to pay off all of your debts. It's going to take time. It's going to take work. It's going to take consistency and persistency, but nothing I'm going to show you is hard at all, but I'm going to show you how to do that by using, yes, your qualified retirement plan by utilizing the loan provisions in your 401k plan. Now, let me give you some disclaimers because I got to get these disclaimers out. Do not apply what I'm about to teach you if you think you're gonna switch jobs inside the next few years. Do not do this if you think your boss is gonna fire your ass because you just did something really bad last week. And do not, do not, do not apply what I'm about to teach you if you're not going to be an honest banker. And I'll get into what that means. So let me show you the secret sauce. Let me show you a process that will allow you to pay off all your debts using money you already have sitting in your 401k that will benefit you, that will get you to that financial destination, that port of call. So there are some kind of crappy rules with 401ks and retirement plans. And I'm not talking about IRAs, I'm talking about employer sponsored plans. You work for an employer or you own a company and you have a qualified retirement plan. This only works if you've got a paycheck coming in because what they're going to do is they're gonna allow you, in most cases, not all, they're gonna allow you to take a loan from your retirement plan. So I got some numbers up here. They might not be yours, but just plug your numbers in. Fair enough? Okay. So let's say somebody's got a 401k and it's got a $100,000 balance in the 401k. And right now, that money's in the S&P 500. Congratulations. Last year, 2023, you did over 20% if you were in the S&P 500, awesome. But here's the non-awesome thing. You are now at the top. The markets are starting to come down. This is January, 2024. We're already seeing weakness. So what would you do if you didn't want to give all that money, that hundred grand that you saved and grew, if you didn't want to give that back to the stock market, those greedy, greedy Wall Street bastards? Well, you would do what Warren Buffett said. You would sell high. So if you're at the high point, this might be a good exit stage left. Well, does it really matter what's left or right? You can't even tell anyway, because I'm reversed or maybe I'm not. Anyway, you should get out of the market. But you know what? There's a couple ways to do that. One, work. You know, you gotta go in and you gotta click buttons. You gotta know what you're doing. You gotta talk to somebody and then they try selling you something. We don't wanna do that. But here's what we're going to do. We're gonna tap into the max loan that you can take out of your 401k. Now here's the max loan. It's either 50% of your balance. So if you had 100, 50% is 50,000 or 50,000 is the max you can take. 50% or 50,000. I know it's not a lot. So here's what we gotta do. We gotta continue the cycle. If 50 isn't enough to pay off all your debts, well, we might have to do a cycle a few times and I'm gonna show you how to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a loan from our retirement plan, okay? When you take a loan, I wanna be very crystal clear about this. Out of your paycheck, weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, however you're paid, they will take money from your paycheck. They will take money from your paycheck to repay the loan based on the terms that guess who decides? You decide. 
You want to repay that loan in three years? You want to repay it in five? I think they even go longer than five, like six or seven years. You pick how long you want that loan to be repaid, and that will determine the principal and interest repayment back to your 401k. So if we take a loan for 50 grand, there's going to be a monthly payment that the 401k is going to require you to pay back. And it's gonna come out of each paycheck. Be very clear about this. So when you get a paycheck after you take this loan, it's gonna be less, but it's gonna be okay when I wrap the whole thing in a pretty little box with a bow tie on it in a second. So let's hypothetically say you took a loan out for 50,000. And let's say your 401k was gonna charge you 5% interest on that $50,000 loan. Now already you're like, all right, Chris, I don't like that. I don't wanna take my own money and have to pay interest, but hold on. Do you know who gets the interest? And I don't care if the interest is 5%, I don't care if it's 8%, I don't care if your 401k provider charges 9%. I actually think the higher they charge, the better off you are. Because the one thing a lot of people screw up here, and they, they fail three feet from gold, and I do mean that, they don't do this because they get hung up on the interest rate on the loan. Put it in the comments. Who keeps this five, eight, nine percent interest on the loan that you take out of your 401k when you pay it back? If you're looking in a mirror, that's the person, that handsome little devil, that beautiful face, flowing hair, makeup and lipstick. Yeah, you. That interest is paid back to your 401k. Getting a little excited here. Because you know what's cool about that return? Guaranteed. You know why? Because you're gonna go to work every day because you got bills to pay, and hopefully you're serving a purpose that you believe in, and every payment you make back to your 401k, out of that check that you get is money going back into your 401k at an interest rate that they're charging you, and you keep the interest. That is awesome, but it gets so much better. A lot of people don't know that. So let's just assume that's $944 a month. I just made up a number, right? I don't know if that's exactly what it would be, but let's just say over five years, if I ran an amortization schedule at 5%, your monthly payment is $944. That sucks. $944 coming out of your paycheck every month? Ouch! Hold on a second. But before I show you the good stuff and the fastest way to wealth. Let's just take a little experiment and let's pause because I need you to do something for me. I need you to click that subscribe button. It's right here. Yep. It says subscribe. Click that. And right above is a little bell. That's right. Smash that bell. I've been in the gym a little bit, man. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah, not bad. Ouch. All right. Boxing gloves help. All right. You, my friend, are the IRS and I don't want you anymore. I've been watching Josh Allen too, man. That's that Hail Mary pass. All right, anyway, now that you've subscribed and you've liked this page, let's move on to the fastest way to riches. And that is through your own debts and expenses. Check this out. Now, these may not be your numbers, but I gotta start somewhere. So most of you, I can assume, have a car loan, right? Most of you probably have some credit cards and some of you probably have some other debts, but let's just keep this super duper simple. A car loan. $8,000 that your monthly payment is $466 a month. Now let's assume your car loan is 4.5%. I want you to pay attention. I did this intentionally. Let's say you got a car loan at 4.5%, but you're taking a loan from your 401k at 5. Is that good or bad? Just checking to see who's paying attention. Does it matter if you're paying 5 and paying off a loan at 4.5? Not when the 5% is yours. It's 5 plus 4.5. It's not 5 minus 4.5. Just check in your thinking. See, we gotta plant that idea in our head and focus on it. It's this plus this, not this minus this. So you got a car loan, 466 a month. That's $466 every single month that you are writing a check to someone else's bank. You are not being the bank. You are giving up control of $466 a month to someone else's bank. We're gonna stop that, yep. Visa, MasterCard, Discover, and many of the other credit cards out there. When you make a monthly payment to those credit cards, how's it feel? You like it? Come on, it feels good, right? 
pull the old checkbook out, you write the check, Visa, oh, and you're just thinking, man, I so love Visa. They've always treated me so well. I love the thank you cards. And, and honey, did you see that Christmas present they sent us this year from Visa? Yeah, that wasn't that. Oh, that wine was so tasty. Yep, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna give them a little extra this month. Yep, uh, Visa, we, honey, we owe $10,000 to Visa and they're only charging us 18%. Are you cool with me giving them 24? Good with that. Any of you think that way when you make your credit card payments? No, it pisses you off. And it pisses you off even more when they show you how much that 18% interest on that Visa works out to be in three, five, and 10 years. You're like, holy shit. Anyway, the same is true with MasterCard. So let's just assume car loans 8,000, Visa's 10,000, MasterCard's 15,000, Discover's 17,000. You are giving away 466, 250 a month to Visa, 462 a month to MasterCard, and $382 a month to Discover. All with the best intent to pay all these loans off. But you are losing to the velocity of money. Why? Well, because all of these loans are charging you interest. And every time you make a payment, a lot of that payment is just going to interest. 18% for Visa, 25% for MasterCard, 15% for Discover. Now, pause. Let me transition. Some of you are thinking, ah, Chris, I'm way smarter than that. I got one of those awesome balance transfer 0% cards. Yep, Chris, what you're teaching is stupid. I'm smarter. I just use 0% cards. Hang on a second. Let me get this straight. You really think for the rest of your life, you're just gonna be able to hop to 0% cards and you think that's the solution. You think that's what's gonna do it for you. It might work temporarily if you apply the velocity banking techniques that Christy Vantastic teaches on her great channel. It's Christy Van on Vantastic, but you get the point. But that is not a long-term solution because eventually, you're gonna get that last credit card with the 0%. Something's gonna happen, your credit's gonna hit. They're no longer gonna give it to you. So stop with the nonsense. I've seen it fail too many times. Let's get down to the basics. Let's just pay these jerks off, okay? They're not mailing you Christmas cards. They're not saying thank you. They're always against you and they're always raising your interest rates, especially when the Fed raises. It's like a, a ticket for the credit card companies to just say, we're gonna charge you more and there's nothing you can do about it. So F you, buddy. Anyway. If I were to do the average, and I were to add the 4.5% car loan, the 18% Visa, the 25% MasterCard, the 15% Discover, and I was to do an average, so add them up, divide them by the different number of loans, four, you are giving away 15.6% a year in interest. Now, hang on a second. If you go back in your 401k over here, you go back into your 401k and you look at all your statements for the last 10 years or five years or however far back, have you averaged 15.6% return on your money every single year without ever missing a beat and with very little to no risk? Have you ever, ever gotten that? There might be a couple of you, but I wanna remind those couple. We have been in the longest bull run in history. This is unprecedented and stupid and heavily weighted on monetary stimulus. So if you think this is gonna continue, you are living in a fantasy world. Just plug into that virtual reality shit and don't come out, because that's where you're at right now. But 15.6% for the rest of you, my 95 percenters is a great return, right? How many of you would like 15.6% on your money every year without any changes and there's nothing that has to happen in the economy and the markets for you to get that? Yeah, all of you, right? So let's just do that. Why not get that? Why sit there and think about it? And say, oh, that would be so nice. Oh, honey, man, that would, that would change things, honey. We'd be able to retire at 60 instead of 70. Let's just do it. Plant the idea, work toward it, and implement it. I'm giving you permission and I'm showing you that faith will serve you well here because faith is why you're gonna be persistent and I promise you this will work. So here's what we're gonna do. Now that you understand the fundamentals, we got two sides, your money and the money you're giving away to them. We are going to take back control of all this money you're giving away. This is now going to be our paycheck, not theirs. And here's how we're gonna do it. We're gonna take that $50,000 loan from the 401k and we're gonna move it over to this side, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pay off the car loan, we're gonna pay off the Visa, we're gonna pay off the MasterCard, and we're gonna pay off the Discover. Now, I know I made this super simple and I made all the debts equal exactly 50. Maybe your debts are more than what you can take. We're only gonna pay off the lowest balances to the, the highest. Low balance to highest, because we wanna wipe out more debts than less. 
And I want you to, I don't even want you to care about the interest rate. So if you've got some credit cards, which are higher balances, that would take all 50, but you want to pay them off because of the highest interest rate, don't do it. Pay off the lowest balance. In this scenario, I did this intentionally, $8,000. It's the car loan at four and a half percent. How many of you, I want you to be honest with yourself. How many of you would have chosen to pay the car loan off first over the 18, 25 and 15% loan? How many of you would have paid the car loan off? None of you, right? You would have paid off the Visa, why? Because it's 18. Or you might have even paid off MasterCard because it was the highest. You made a mistake. And here's why. We need to understand velocity. We need to understand how the velocity of money works. Very few people understand this, but I do. And I'm not gonna bore you with it. Here's what I want you to know. It's all about the recapturing of the money you're giving away. It's all about this 466 a month this 250 a month, this 462 a month, and this 382 a month. The car loan is an amortized loan, which usually means it's going to have the highest payment, even though it's the lowest interest rate. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna add up all of these amounts. It works out to be $1,560 a month. We took 50 from the 401k, we paid off all the loans, it freed up $1,560 every month, which works out to be an average return on your money of 15.6%. And here's what we're gonna do. When we pay all these off, we are gonna dedicate 100% of this 1,560 dollar a month payment that you used to just give away, we're gonna dedicate all of that to coming over here and paying off this loan. Now, let me just ask you a question. If the five year payoff on this 401k loan was 944, how fast do you think you'll pay it off if you make $1,560 a month payments back to the 401k? Well, it doesn't matter. Faster than five years, okay? So if you have more debts than this, that gives us the ability every time money goes back, because 401ks and most retirement plans let you take more than one loan. Most will let you take up to two, not all, but most. So we can do this twice. So as we start moving the 1560 back every month, that's $1,560 back in your 401k in the cash account that we could redeploy. But we wanna do this strategically. This, what I'm showing you, is literally the fundamentals of the infinite banking concept. I want you to realize what happened. We took our money, we moved it over to pay off money that we were giving away. We took the money we were giving away, we moved it back over and we put it back in our control. We put it back in a place where we benefit. And the whole time, the whole stinking time this thing was going on, your money was making an interest rate on every payment you made back to that 401k because the interest charged on the 401k loan or retirement plan loan goes in your account. So it is five plus 15.6%. You notice how I save that to the end. That's like the, Okay, I'm gonna stick to what I do and the opera singers can stick to what they do. They're much better. I'm sure you like the B-roll a lot better, but. $1,560 a month. What would that look like in your life if you had that back? What would that look like if literally without working any harder, any longer, without taking on any risk, you were able to save $1,560 a month into your retirement account? Do you think that'd be a good thing or a bad? It'd be a really good thing, wouldn't it? Folks, I can't understand why more advisors aren't showing you to do this. I can't understand why more people aren't doing this. I mean, just simply buy the math on the 401k loan, you get 56, 6, 10 back. But if you just take the money you were giving away, which takes no more work, you're already giving the damn money away. This money exists in your life, except for it's gone every month. You now have it back. Yes, it all goes to your 401k, but isn't that what you wanted? You wanted to retire. Grandma said, hey, you gotta retire someday. But. Let's just assume that we change one thing, okay? We stop putting as much money into the 401k. And now, instead of the 401k, what we do, now let's just assume you want full control of your money. You don't want it all sitting in the 401k, but that might be the starting place for you. What if we just slowed down how much money we're putting into the 401k? Let's just say somebody's putting 10% into their 401k and they're getting a 3% match, okay? So let's just assume that scenario. Well, let's just say that employee, you, took your contribution from 10% 
and you reduced it down to three. Why three? Well, because that's how much you get in free money. If you put three in, you get three free. I can't give you free money or teach you how to get free money, but that essentially after the vesting schedule is ideally money that was just gifted to you because of your employer. So let's just say now we've got 7% every single month extra that you can put somewhere else. Well, take the exact same fundamentals that we just looked at a second ago. Everything identical to what we just did, except for now we don't put money in the 401k above and beyond the match. Now all we do is we take that 7% and we put it into a specially designed and engineered whole life insurance policy with a mutually owned insurance company that pays dividends. I know, I know what you're all thinking. You're thinking, why in the world would I put my money in one of those? Well, I'm gonna make this super simple, and then at the end of this, I'm gonna give you a video to watch to prove it, okay? Let's just say your policy was paying you 5.5% interest and dividends. I'm just using an arbitrary number. Yours might be different than what I'm showing you, but let's just assume that. And let's just say the 7% works out to be $10,000, okay? You got 10 grand in cash value in your specially designed and engineered whole life. But over here, we got debts. Remember, 1,560 at 15.6, whatever. Let's just get rid of that and keep this simple. Let's just focus on the one credit card debt. I believe it was the MasterCard at 15% interest. And let's just call it 300 a month, okay? I'm just making stuff up. Let's say now, instead of taking the loan from the 401k, we take the loan from the specially designed and engineered whole life, which in this scenario, if you had 10 grand in cash, you could take the money immediately in the first 30 days. And what we do is we move that 10 grand from your policy over here and we pay off the MasterCard at $10,000, okay? Then we take the $300 a month interest payment you were making to MasterCard and we send that money back to the policy, okay? That's $300 a month. We recycle and recapture that $300 a month back into the policy as a loan repayment. If you started with 10 and we took 10 out to pay the credit card off, math check, how much money was still in your policy if it was designed and engineered properly earning interest and dividends. How much? Put it in the comments. Some of you are thinking, well, Chris, I'm not an idiot. 10,000 minus 10,000 is zero, so there's nothing left. Wrong. If you had 10,000 in cash value and you took 10,000 as a loan from your policy, you still have 10,000 in the policy, earning interest and dividends. Why? because the insurance company makes a couple promises. They promise you a guaranteed interest rate and they promise you a death benefit. So let's just say your death benefit's $500,000. Now that's money that gets paid the day you die. But the insurance company will allow you to take your death benefit in the form of a loan up to the amount of cash value you have because that's the collateral. So really, when we took the 10 grand, it didn't come from our policy. Our policy just collateralized a $10,000 loan from our death benefit. So now our death benefit's only 490. Don't step in front of any buses. That 10,000 was loaned to you by the insurance company and the going rates right now are right around 5%, give or take, depending on companies. So you're making five and a half uninterrupted compounding. You're paying five, so you are making a, ideally a spread. And every year that goes on because of compounding, your spread gets bigger. You paid off a credit card, you did the same thing I just showed you to do with the, with the 401k, and you take the amount you were given to the credit cards before and you put it back into your policy. How much is available in your policy above and beyond the 10,000 every month you make the $300 loan repayment? $300 more. $300 more. All you're doing is you're taking the 300 and you're repaying the loan you took from the insurance company. So of course, if you repay the loan, that money's immediately available. And the only differential is the 5%. You give the 5% simple interest to the insurance company one time per year. How much was the credit card? 15%. So what is 15 minus five? 10. So you made 10 plus whatever your internal rate of return was on your policy, which all of them are gonna be different based on the year that you're at in the policy. But it's gonna be this plus this. Doesn't this sound similar to what I just did? All I'm doing is showing you the evolution. All I'm doing is walking you down a path to show you how to build wealth through your debts and expenses and to take back control of the money that you are putting in the 401k, which you have to wait for. So folks, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something, but most importantly, I hope I planted a worthy idea that you take action on. Go out there, kick some ass, slay some credit card companies and some car finance companies and kick some ass. So now that I've showed you something that maybe you knew about, but more than likely you didn't, 
What do you think? Using a 401k in a completely unconventional way, but taking back control of your money, being your own bank while using money that was sitting there out of your control in the markets for good or for bad. And now you know how to be debt free, but you don't just know how to be debt free. You know how to be debt free while recapturing all the money that you are giving away on all those debts. The one thing I got to say about this, this isn't a get rich quick thing. This isn't going to happen quickly. It's going to happen over time, but a lot less time than you trying to do it the traditional way. And I want to plant one more worthy idea in your mind. If you apply what I just taught you, if you do this, the next step after all is done, all your debts are paid off will be you will understand what the infinite banking concepts are. You will understand the process, not the product, the process of taking back the banking functions in your life. And if you want to learn more about that, check this video out right here. The money multiplier method. This video is what set the stage for me and so many others. So watch that video and we'll take your call after you're done.